Okay, so uh, moving on to today's message, uh, I would like to turn our attention to Luke chapter 14, please. Uh, Luke chapter 14. And uh, uh, before I go to Luke 14, uh, let me just tell a story. Uh, those who are, uh, you know, some of you have heard this story, but, um, but many of our younger people might not have heard this, heard this story uh, because this story comes from the time when uh, the ox carts were common here. And uh, so you have a, a cart driven by one or two oxen and uh, people would use that carry loads and sometimes people would travel on that. Uh, this was years back. Anyway, one man uh, was walking down the road, an older gentleman walking down the road. He had a heavy load that he was carrying on his head and an ox cart was coming by. And so the man saw this, uh, the elderly man walking with a heavy load. And so he stopped and, uh, and gave a ride to the old man that is uh, walking like that. And, uh, and when he did that, the old man got on the vehicle on the ox cart and uh, he's, uh, he's riding on the ox cart. But after a while, the one who's driving the ox cart, he looks back and he notices that, um, that this man still has the load on his head. And it was a heavy load. And so the one driving said, uh, you know, uh, he said, sir, uh, you can put the load down. You're still carrying that. And so the man said, look, I, I, you know, these, these oxen, they're working so hard and they're carrying my weight. And so let me help by carrying this weight that is on my head. And uh, so it's an old story, but, uh, but it gives an illustration that actually uh, there was no need for that man to carry that burden because that burden was already carried by the, uh, the oxen that are there. So now let's uh, look at uh, Luke chapter 14. Actually, I would like to look at the entire uh, chapter 14, verse 12 to 24. But right now, I will read only verse 12 and 13, okay? Luke chapter 14, verse 12 and 13. He said also to the man who had invited him, when you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. And I bless each of these children and the youth that have joined us and their families as well. And I pray that uh, the next few minutes as we look into your word, I pray that you would speak to us. Lord, we want to hear your voice. Lord, we want to hear what you have to speak to us. Not only with our ears, but with our mind and with our heart. Let us hear and let us be blessed by your voice because what we need to hear today, more than anything else, Lord, is your voice. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So we saw this, uh, this verse uh, that uh, I just read. He said to the man who had invited him. So Jesus was invited to uh, this home for a feast to eat. And, and several things had happened there. But, um, but I, I want to focus my time here. But one of the things was in the beginning of chapter 14, there was a man there. Uh, the, it, the home was a ruler of the Pharisees. In other words, among the religious Jewish people of that time, uh, the Pharisees were part of the upper, uh, the upper echelon. They were the, like the ruling group. And uh, so one of the rulers of that group, okay? So obviously this man was very high in position. So it was one of the rulers of that group and um, who had invited him carefully. And then uh, there was a man there who had some kind of a disease and, um, but this was the Sabbath. And so the people were watching clearly to see if Jesus would heal this man 
on the Sabbath. And of course, we know the story. The man uh, was healed by Jesus. And of course, these people are not happy because they feel like you should not do any work on the Sabbath. Okay, that was the that was the law that God had given. It wasn't from anyone else. But uh, but Jesus said, you know, um, sure, you should keep the law, but you also have to realize that you can do good on the Sabbath. But uh, but that was a point of contention because they did not want him to heal the sick on the Sabbath. But Jesus said, look, I'm doing something good. Leave me alone. That's basically what Jesus was saying. But they were pretty upset with him about that. And, uh, and then verse 7 onwards, um, uh, Jesus uh, told a parable to those who were invited um, because he noticed that the people that came for the feast, they were all looking for the prominent position. They wanted to look, they wanted the seats that were very prominent, you know, the important seats, you know, the seats that make you look like you are, uh, you are special, you are someone of authority, of status, and um, <clears throat> any place you go to, uh, whether it's, uh, it's a, a dinner, uh, even a dinner in a home, or, or just anywhere it is, there will always be uh, some place or some corner or some seat somewhere where you know that that is the prominent place. And so Jesus saw that people were looking to find that, you know, they wanted, uh, they wanted that position. They wanted that seat. And Jesus said, look, don't look for places of honor, but rather he said, you know, why should you go and, and go sit in a place of honor? Because in case somebody else more honorable than you shows up, then of course, you know, the, the master of the, of the home, they will come and say, look, you know, please, would you stand up? You know, would you get up and sit somewhere else? Because, you know, we have somebody more important than you that is here. So why make a fool of yourself, you know? So when you go for a place like that, basically Jesus said, you know, don't look for the prominent place. Look for a, you know, just a common place and sit there. And if they invite you to a better place, fine. Otherwise, don't look for that. All right. So these are the background behind this. And then now, okay, that was just a little background. I'm so sorry. But then he said to the man who had invited him, look at this. This is what is so, uh, so thrilling. Jesus said, when you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers, your relatives or your rich neighbors, because they may invite you in return to their home and then you will be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and then what? And you will be blessed because, because they cannot repay you, okay? For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Now we know that Jesus throughout his ministry, he blessed many people. How did he bless them? Oh my, he healed the sick. He, you know, he did things that was such a blessing to so many people. He cast out demons. He did miraculous things. And people's lives were changed because of what Jesus did. And after he was doing the miraculous things for them, then he invited them to the kingdom. And he invited them to be a part of the kingdom. And he invited them to follow him. That was what he was doing. So, the basic idea is Jesus is inviting people to follow him. And today, Jesus in, is inviting us to follow him. Jesus is inviting not only the whole world. Of course, he is inviting the whole world, but he's also inviting us to follow him. So about that invitation, about Jesus' invitation to follow him, I want to say just three things about Jesus' invitation. Number one, no repayment is possible. We cannot repay. Number two, no excuses need to be given. And then number three, no restrictions. These very few things, just these three things I'm going to say, and I would like to just pray for you, and we'll close our time together. First, no repayment. Look at that. Jesus said, when you invite someone for a special meal or a din dinner or a banquet, what type of people should you invite? Invite the type of people that cannot even invite you for dinner. 
Now, I mean, that, what kind of people are those? Everybody has a dinner, everybody eats food, right? But invite those who are so poor and destitute that they cannot even invite you home for dinner. And you would say, oh, that's pretty sad. I mean, that's, I mean, if, if somebody can't even invite you for dinner, if they can't even feed you one meal, that's, I mean, that's as poor as poor can get. How poor can you be? But Jesus said, you need to invite people like that. Why? Because they cannot repay you, and then you will be repaid by a Father in heaven. So in saying this, Jesus was also reflecting the idea that God is inviting us to his home. He's inviting us to the kingdom. And the kingdom invitation, uh, it, it, the Bible talks about a meal, the marriage supper of the Lamb, all of these ideas are given there. But what is so special about this is that this invitation and this meal is an invitation to fellowship with God, to a close relationship with God. But the key is this, he's inviting us. What kind of people are we? We are the type of people that cannot repay anything back to God. We cannot give anything back. Not even that invitation, not even a meal, nothing at all. We are unable to repay God for anything at all. But you might say, but surely I, I would like to do something, you know, I, because, because he did so much for me. I would like to do something. Sure, we all have that desire. And as the story I told you in the beginning, the old man, he gets into the cart and he's still carrying the weight because he's trying to help the oxen. All right, we know that that won't work. But you know what? It's something like that with us. I know the children are listening to me and our young people are there, the youths are there. But let me tell you, there's nothing we can do for our salvation. Jesus Christ has done all of that for us on the cross. Why are we saved? Why do we have, we have entry into the kingdom? Why is it or how is it that we can be God's children? because of the grace of Jesus Christ, because Jesus paid the price on the cross. <clears throat> so we say that salvation is free, but it's not cheap. It's not cheap. It is very expensive. It's highly expensive, but the cost was paid by Jesus. But you might say, but can, but can, I, can I just pay something? No, nothing can be paid by us for that at all. And so there's a, a, a certain perspective, um, some theologians that talk about something called the total depravity of man. That idea means that we, because of the fall of Adam and Eve, we are totally depraved. That means uh, we, we are not even able to love God with a full heart, mind, and strength. We're just not able to do that because our, we are inclined by nature to do whatever we like to do. By nature, we are the type of people that constantly go away from God. So we're totally depraved, but we are saved by God's grace. Repayment is not possible. And then Jesus begins to tell a story of a man who invited a lot of people, the prominent people and the big people of the land <clears throat> to come for uh, a feast and uh, and you know what happened each of them gave excuses each of them had an excuse one of them said look i bought a field and i cannot come i need to go check out the field another person said look i bought five yoke of oxen and i need to go try them out <clears throat> another man said i married a wife but you know but i i cannot come and so you look at these three excuses and all three are literally lame excuses. It's just not, I mean, you're, you're, you're just being invited for a feast. Come on. It's a dinner. It's a celebration. You can't go. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, <clears throat> I just bought a field. No, I need to go check it out. So who would buy a field without first checking it out? Who will buy property without going first and seeing it? If you buy a house or just a plot of land or whatever it is, of course you would have gone and checked it out. But you know that this is simply a lie. The second one, I bought five yoke of oxen. 
five yoke of oxen. Now, many of you listening to me, you may not know the value of an oxen. And in those days, you know, buying an oxen would be similar to buying a car. And you say, well, you know, five cars? Well, obviously he bought five. No, it would be 10. Five yoke would be like two each, right? One yoke would be two. So that would be about 10 oxen. <clears throat> That's expensive. That's a lot of money. So he spent this big money and, and he's saying now, I need to go try them out. You mean to tell me that this man bought 10 oxen and he didn't check it out? He didn't try it out? I mean, it's a lame excuse. He just didn't want to show up. And look at the third excuse. I married a wife. <clears throat> and you say, come on. This is just a celebration. So if you married a wife, fine. Bring your wife. Come, let's celebrate. No, no, I, I can't come. We know that in the Jewish culture that, it, actually it was in the Old Testament, that uh, if you're married, uh, you cannot go to war for one year. All right, that's the only limitation. But there's no other limitation. Just because you got married, you can't go to a dinner. What, what is this? You know. So basically what he's saying is, look, uh, thanks for your invitation, but you know what? You're such a boring person, I don't want to come. Uh, or, see, in this situation, Jesus... He's inviting people to the banquet, to the kingdom, to the marriage supper of the Lamb, to the kingdom. And he's saying, come, let's eat together. Come, let's join together. And <clears throat> the people are saying, sorry, I, I've got some important things. Yeah, everybody has important things. But he's saying, look, I've got something more important than you, Jesus. So look at that. More important than Jesus. And so... What does Jesus do? He doesn't compel them. He doesn't try to force them. He says, fine, forget those people. Actually, it says the master became angry. He was upset. And he said to his servants, he said, go out and just invite anybody that will come. Anybody, just invite them. He said, go out and call those who are needy, the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, anyone who could come, just bring them in. He said, I want my banquet house to be full of people, invite them. And what happened? The servant went out and invited them, but they did not come. Only some came and still there was room. And so the servant says to them, still there is room, still there is room. I've invited, they came, but still there is room. And so the master said, no, 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 no. I know there is more. Go out there and compel them to come. Now, let me ask you, why compel them? Why didn't he compel the other group of people? You know, the ones who gave excuses? He said, oh, I bought a field, I bought some oxen, I just married a wife. And uh, Why didn't Jesus, or why didn't the master compel them? Or why wouldn't Jesus compel the people with excuses? Because they didn't want him. You remember when Jesus sent the disciples out, to go and heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, and tell people about the kingdom. And Jesus told his disciples, he said, look, if they are not interested and they are not accepting you and receiving you, he said, you remember what he said? Shake the dust off your shoes and walk away. And so for those who simply give excuses, don't bother, just walk away. But what about the second group? the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. What about those people? He said, compel them. Why? Well, why didn't they all come with the first invitation? Maybe they felt like they were not worthy. You see, here's a very wealthy, prominent man in the community inviting them, and they felt like they were not worthy to come. And you might think, why? Why would that be? Would you, you think, you know, in your mind, if the prime minister were to call you for dinner and you got a phone call and you pick up the phone and, uh, and you know, and, and on the other end it says, oh, hello, this is the prime minister and I'm calling you for dinner in my home. I would like you to come and have dinner with my family. And if you hear that, what would you say? If I got a call like that, I might laugh and I might say, who is this? Who is, who is uh, playing a prank? 
uh, which one of my friends or which one of the young people in my church are calling me with a joke? Come on, who is the joke? Who is playing a joke on me? Because I, I wouldn't believe them. Or, uh, you know, knowing that or thinking that it's one of my friends pulling a prank or a joke, I might say, oh, sorry, sir, I don't have time. You know, I've got busy. I'm too busy for you and things like that. I might make a joke and hang up the phone. The prime minister is not going to call me. Who am I to get such an invitation? So in a similar way, when Jesus calls, when God the Father calls, there are people who would look and say, you know what? I'm not worthy. I, I mean, I'm such a sinful person. There's so many things in my life that's a mess. I'm just not worthy to be a child of God. And you might say, what? What? Wait a minute. Really? Yes. There are people who would think like that. Just recently, I heard a story, a true story of a man <clears throat> whose son was brutally killed by a group of youngsters. And at the trial, the father decided to forgive them. And somehow, <clears throat> somehow, the judge freed them, maybe thinking that without the father's testimony, without the father standing up with this, that the trial would not go through. Anyway, the father backed off and these men were freed. They were young people. They were freed. And so they were so happy they were just running out because they were guilty. But they were freed. The father forgave and they were freed. And they walked out of the, out of the uh, courthouse and as they were ready to run out, they noticed that father leaning on his car and he said to this young man, now you have your freedom. Now what are you going to do with that freedom now? And the young man, he was stunned. Because he knew that he was not worthy. Because he knew that he was guilty of what he did. He was not worthy of the forgiveness that was given to him. Let me tell you something. All of us are guilty. All of us are unworthy of the love of Jesus, the forgiveness that Jesus gives us. So finally what God does is he throws off all restrictions and he says invite everyone, the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and all that, would, that are not able to come, that are not worthy to come, that just cannot, uh, can never repay. And see the debt that Jesus paid for us can never be repaid. So such an invitation God has given us. Why? Why is it that Jesus told, the, that the servants were told to go and compel them? Maybe because they would not believe it. Maybe because they felt unworthy. So three things I'm sharing with you today. Three things. The invitation to the kingdom. The invitation to be a child of God. The invitation to be Part of God's family is for us and for many people all over the world. The invitation is wide open, okay? But there are three things I want you to know about that invitation. First, there's no repayment. You cannot repay. There's no repayment. It is not possible for you to repay because the cost is too much. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we cannot repay ourselves. So Jesus had to die for us. So there's no repayment. Second thing, no excuses. Those who make excuses, Jesus simply ignores them and says, look, they're not meant to be here. Forget them. Let them go. If any of you are listening to me who have not made a commitment to follow Christ, fully, wholeheartedly, to just give your life to Jesus. Let me tell you, if you've been making excuses, please stop it. Please, no more excuses. Please don't do that. Because he may just pull the invitation. Don't do it. 
no more excuses. Readily accept the invitation that Jesus gives, no excuses. And finally, realize there are no restrictions. What does this mean? That means that all are invited. No restrictions. We are invited to God's kingdom, to be a part of his kingdom, to be his child. Every young person that's listening to me, every child that's listening to me, let me tell you, your friends, people you study with, your neighbors, your whoever it is, other family members that don't know Jesus. So first, the invitation is to you to follow Jesus with all your heart. But then the invitation is also for your friends who don't know Christ. Let them know this wonderful invitation by the king. Let them know that this is a true and real invitation by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who created us. See, it's not an invitation to a religion. Please understand me. Please understand. Jesus did not come to establish a religion. That was not the purpose. God the Father is not looking for another religion. Not at all. See, the Father's only intention is all the people that he created, he wanted them to be in relationship with him. He just wants them to come back to a relationship with him. That's what God wanted. He is the creator. So you, your friends, your classmates, your relatives, your neighbors, whoever it is, invite them to the kingdom and tell them, hey, it's an invitation that you cannot repay. The it's a very costly invitation you can't repay. Second, tell them, please, don't make excuses. Readily accept it because those who make excuses, you lose out. You lose out. You may not have that invitation very long. I know a lot of people who backed off from the invitation and for a long time, their lives have been a mess because I've been able to watch over the years, many, many years. Some of you young people may not have had that many years, but I've been able to see people's lives whom I wanted to share the gospel with. I wanted them to come to Jesus, but they didn't. For some reason, they said, look, I've got bigger and better things to do. And they just walked away from the invitation and their lives are still in a mess. I'm talking about the time, even from when I was a young person, even when I was in school, even when I was in high school, invitations that I gave to my friends, they, they refused. I know some of them even now, their lives are a mess completely a mess. The invitation, they just never accepted it. And it's been 30, 35, 38 years ago that the invitation was given to them. Still, they're lost. And still, they're in a mess. And eternity, but I still hope that one day they will take that invitation. And then finally, no restrictions. Who are the kind of people that he invites? He invites everyone. But the ones who really accept, the ones who really follow, are the ones who are poor, crippled, the lame, and the blind. What does that mean? That means those who truly know their need, who will truly understand their need. Please really listen. We are needy. We are needy. Because in ourselves, we are just not able. We are just not able to help ourselves. We are needy because we need Jesus. We need him to come and change our lives. So what is your situation today? What are you facing today? Maybe as a child or as, as a young person, as a youth, I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're going through. Each one has their own struggles. Each one, on the outside, everything may look fine. Everything may look good. And, and, you know, your friends and others may be looking at you. And inside, you may be experiencing some of the things that, that no one else knows. Maybe your parents don't even know. Your friends don't know. Your brothers, your sisters that are with you, they don't know. The people in your church may not know. But let me tell you, God knows. And he's giving that invitation to you. He knows your pain. He understands your pain. And therefore, he's giving that invitation to you. Maybe today's the day that you take that invitation. Today is the day you say yes to Jesus. Today is the day that some of you will turn your heart to Jesus. And also, there'll be some of you who would make that decision to say, you know what, I want my friends to come to Jesus. I want my neighbors, I my classmates, Whoever it is, I want them to turn their hearts to Jesus. Maybe today is the day that you will do that too. Let me pray for you.
Father, I bless each one of these children and the youths and their families that are listening to me. Thank you so much, Lord, for the beautiful and awesome invitation you've given us. Thank you for that, Lord. And I pray that you would build faith in each one who is listening to me. Faith to believe you. Faith to trust you. Faith to accept that invitation. Let faith arise within them that they would accept that invitation that you give them. And enter the kingdom. Enter the relationship with you. Thank you, Father, for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.